are tumbling. Hi, I'm Louise Palenker, and this is Quarantainment. Sorry if my voice is a little hoarse. I just got back from yelling at a nurse because I really want to get my nails done. Actually, I would really love to know what you miss the most. For example, I miss Starbucks and I'm a brat, so I miss my cleaning lady. I'm trying to clean up, honestly I am, but I never shadowed her, so I'm just kind of flying blind here. I've got like the toilet, I've got that down, uh, linens, towels, I've been uh, doing my laundry. What else should be happening? How often are we supposed to clean the floor? Is this like a weekly thing or yearly? I am really gonna miss Big Brother. I just don't think they can pull off the Zoom version of Big Brother because that would involve Julie Chen announcing with a vote of six to eight, Megan, you have been evicted from this conference call. Okay, so today for your entertainment recommendations, we are going to be young adulting. The YA genre is huge and it's not just for actually young adults because I believe that inside each of us there resides a soul who is eternally coming of age. We are forever wrestling with moral dilemmas and recreating our sense of self and our place in the world. And that is why we always relate to stories like Little Women, Huckleberry Finn, The Outsiders, and To Kill a Mockingbird. These stories also fuel great films, and that's another reason why YA titles are so much fun to read. You get to enjoy the book and then the movie. I found this list of YA titles that have become movies on Goodreads. So you've got the obvious examples, like of course Harry Potter and The Hunger Games. So I wanted to let you know about a few more books that have become movies. Let's start with The Giver by Lois Lowry. It's the story of a future society where it has been decided that in order to eliminate pain and tragedy, joy and love must also be mitigated. So everyone lives in a very structured, organized, orderly world where everything is decided for them. Only one man holds onto the world's memories so that he can be consulted when the community needs to know if a rule change may potentially spiral into war or famine. This man is getting older and he must transfer his memories to a young boy. This book is a Newbery Prize winner that has been recommended reading for many middle school kids. It inspires all kinds of thought about what matters and what we as humans are meant to experience. In the film, Jeff Bridges plays the giver. Lois Lowry initially intended for this part to go to his father, Lloyd Bridges, but the film was in development for so long that ultimately the part goes to the son, Jeff, and he turns in a brilliant performance. Meryl Streep's presence adds a lovely frosting of Streep, but the film diverts from the book in a few key places. One, the book is about middle school kids, and the film features high school kids, so they get to add some romance and different pieces of Jeopardy, most of which are great cinematic choices. I greatly enjoyed both book and film. You should read The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzak. This is one of the finest books I've ever read. It tells the story of a young girl growing up in Hitler's Germany. During World War II, the citizens of Germany were living under authoritarian rule with all energy and resources going towards the war effort. They were starving and freezing, and this girl's hunger for books that were being publicly burned served as a metaphor for what is destroyed when we go to war. It's just a truly excellent book, and the movie version is just as wonderful. It stars Jeffrey Rush, Emily Watson, and Sophie Nilis. Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close is a book by Jonathan Saffron Foer. This is the extraordinary story of a nine-year-old boy who finds a key in a vase that belonged to his father, a year after his dad is killed in 9-11. The discovery inspires Oscar to search throughout New York for information about the key and closure regarding the death of his father. Aside from your natural panic which arises when you picture this child subwaying his way around New York, it's just a grippingly well-told story. The film is beautiful and it stars Tom Hanks and Sandra Bullock and it's got Max von Sydow, so yeah, check it out. Then there is Flipped by Wendelin Van Dronen. This is just a great little book that perfectly illustrates the bumpiness of adolescent feelings. It's told from the perspective of two kids. They like each other, rarely at the same time, and the storytelling is highly relatable. Rob Reiner adapted this into an excellent film. Read and watch. Both are fantastic. The movie Love, Simon was first a book called Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. There are a few changes from book to movie, but they add conflict and jeopardy. Both book and film beg the question, when raising children, why is straight the default position? Shouldn't parents always be messaging to their children that they may fall in love with a girl or a boy, or they may want to dress like a girl or a boy, and any and all of the above is going to be perfectly okay? 
Why should any kid ever have to come out? They should always be told whatever you are is fine. The book Wonder is written by R.J. Palaccio, which is a pen name for Raquel Jaramillo. This story is just sensational. It's about a boy with a severe facial difference, and it's told sequentially by family members and friends. The author brilliantly captures how each individual, including the boy Augie, are impacted by his situation. The movie stars Jacob Tremblay, Owen Wilson, and Julia Roberts. It's nearly perfect. You really should find and read The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. This is a book you will think about for a long time. It's told from the point of view of a child whose father has been assigned as a Nazi guard at a concentration camp. In the beginning, the boy has little idea of where he is, or why he is there, or what is going on there. His increasing awareness is chillingly told, and it mirrors that of the world at large. The film version comes from the BBC, and it is excellent. After recently subscribing to the Disney Plus streaming service to help get me through this quarantine, I noticed that a young adult novel called Stargirl from the year 2000 has recently been adapted as a film for the streaming service. So I went out and read the book. I didn't go out. I mean, I stayed home like you guys and read the book. Disney dramatically tones down Stargirl's quirky eccentricities and tinkers with the plot to the extent of affecting the message. That's all I want to say because hashtag no spoilers. But it's fun to watch, and Stargirl is played by America's Got Talent winner Grace Vanderwall, who already had ukulele listed in the special skills section of her resume. She's adorable. Before I go, I'd like to recommend that people with no kids as bunker mates send learning tools, toys, and games to people who are home with children. Inspired by my cousin Rowan, who was playing with a circuit board, I found this deluxe model on Amazon. It is unwieldingly titled Snap Circuits Extreme SC750R Electronics Exploration Kit Plus Student Training Program with Student Study Guide Perfect for STEM Curriculum. Rowan had this in his hands for 10 minutes and he built a radio. Hi, Weezy. I, I, with you, Snap Circuits, I made an FM radio. Press the T to go to the next station, and then press the R button, press, and then press the T button, and it should work. And then you can adjust the sound level. Thank you so much! <laughs> and possibly inspired by the thoughtful anonymous acts of Stargirl, we recently received this in our mailbox. It says, Stay Positive, Author Anonymous. Thank you. There are so many ways we can be there for each other. Let's keep on doing exactly that. Tell me what you miss the most. Tell me what you've been watching. Tell me what you've been reading. I am Louise Palenker. This is Quarantainment, and I will see you next time. Bye.